on this money-grubbing episode of the NES Pursuit. Lemonade. <laughs> the trio takes a trip to a toy and video game store that has exactly what they crave. Dude, I saw it first. Okay. Paws off. Riff gets his juju going as he finds yet another random Nintendo collectible. This is old, it's vintage, it's odd, it's a weird oddity. NES Complex jumps into Ricky's deal to get a game he has long desired. You okay? I'm okay. You need one of these things, don't you? Ricky trades the unbelievable for a vintage Mario toy. I don't really think any sellers would do that deal. At their next destination, poor NES Complex does what he swore he would never do. And so, I did the unthinkable. I can't believe I did this. Next stop, the completionist, as the collectors return some games to Gerard that Riff was holding on to. And you're gonna add more. That's what we do, man. We but, just keep adding But the real stuff. question is, where is the Zelda? Warm your burrito and get ready for odd bartering, sour Skittle ADD, rare beauties, and stories that should not be told. Ricky, yeah. you see, <laughs> yeah, you see one side of Ricky on camera, but when the camera's off, he's violent. This is the NES Pursuit. take the guys to a place, Toys vs. Games. We're going out to a place I've never been called Toys vs. Games. We know the owner, so we're excited to go. Hey. Well, hello. <laughs> I am so excited to finally go out with Ricky. You know, every time I go out, it's like it's just me and Riff. Or it's, for whatever reason, Ricky hasn't been with us. Dude, my job takes me everywhere, so I, whenever I go somewhere, I look for game shops. And I found this one. And oddly enough, it's some guy, it's someone I know, Tony, that I always see. Swap meets, conventions. So let's check it out. I'm looking forward to the luck that Ricky will bring us. Let's do it and see how the pursuit plays out. That's how I like to start every video now, apparently. Did you have quarters? Or is it that one right there? Do you have quarters? Actually, it's kind of weird. I I actually have a pocket full of quarters. I don't know why. I didn't know we were gonna have a meter. It's just Did you random. Think we were going to an arcade today? Uh, no, I thought you might need to borrow some money. It's fine. And I thought I'd have a pocket full of change for you. I would like to let you know that I brought quarters, and I won employee of the month, and I got some gift cards in here. Which they gave me Victoria's Secret, which is they know what I wear under this. Oh boy, absolutely nothing. So I'm so stoked that Ricky found this place. We walk in and it's a, it's a wonderland for us. It's got toys and games, it's everything we're looking for. The first thing I notice as an OCD person is this place is clean, it is nicely laid out. It's wide, it's open, it's big old long store. I'm excited to dive in and look for some weird odd collectibles, that's what I want. I always find myself on the ground, crouching down, looking in glass cases. This is, this is what my life's become. So one of the things I saw was this Fetal Fury hat. Now, I love fighting games. Fetal Fury is up there with Street Fighter and King of Fighters. One of my favorite games. It's right there. It's like kind of meshes the King of Fighters at one point because it's you know it's SNK. You know what? I need that hat. I don't have that hat, so I'm gonna get it. 
And you know what? I asked him how much. Um, how much for the hat? Then? How much for this hat? For Terry Bogart's hat. He said 10 bucks. 10 bucks? Okay. That's, that's more than fair. 10 bucks is not bad for a hat, especially a hat I want. Terry Bogart's hat, yes. $10 is more than fair. I'll have to bring my trade though. I brought stuff to trade. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it. I really did. One of my favorite characters there. Wears that nice little red vest and then when he wins he goes, yeah. Well, not like that. He's pretty yeah, slick. There were so many people that were disappointed. So while the guys are looking around, I kind of see something in the corner of my eye that I don't want to ask about until they know what they want because I don't want Chris, if I'm being honest, I don't want Chris to want to try to snake it like he did the clock, but I see. So I don't know how, it might be completely out of my range, but is that thing for sale over there? The Mario radio looking thing over there? This weird looking Nintendo, I thought was like a radio Mario thing. Whatever that thingy is down there. I'll tell you what it is. For a pinball machine. Come to find out, this is like a topper for like an old pinball Nintendo Mario machine. This right here, right? That is for a pinball machine? There's a scoreboard. See, I'm a sort of winner. I brought the scoreboard. I brought the scoreboard. Tony, I say, what is this? When he tells me all this information, I'm like, okay, okay, this is interesting. Wow, this is cool. So it's for an actual pinball machine, the one that I don't have, clearly. It sounds expensive, but I say, hey, you know what? It's so cool looking, though. Yeah, I couldn't leave it behind when I seen it. How much is it anyway? It's probably expensive, huh? How much? What the hell are you doing? Eight bucks for you. He comes back with eight bucks. Eight dollars? Sold. Just like Sold. that. Just eight dollars? Don't, don't tell him. I would put down easily 20 on this thing because this is old, it's vintage, it's odd, it's a weird oddity. I would jump and do like a big thing, but Ricky broke my rib, so I can't Aww. be excited today. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. It's interesting, but I now have it in my collection for just eight bucks. I win. Take that, Complex. I love you, and you're still the greatest thing that ever happened to the show and everything in the world. You're just awesome and smooth skin, and you look pretty. Actually, you have a soft skin. Dude, I forgot to push record. Shut up, I'll kill you. I'm just joking. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> so I'm looking at the main case, and I'm not seeing a whole lot that I like, but he had it in the back. There was another case, like, you know, behind the, the counter. So it was a the special case. The piranha plant was guarding it. But we're we're able to pass the piranha plant. It's just like it's just like playing Mario Brothers. And so I look in there and I see a Mega Man Six, and uh, I had to get that. And I had no idea what he would ask for it because Mega Man Six, you know, it can be a little pricey depending on who you ask. Okay, so what are you thinking on these three? Uh, Uncanny X Men and Adventure Island and Mega Man Six. Mega Man Six. X man. So I bring all the games over and I put them on the counter and I'm asking him like how much are you gonna charge for this and like internally I'm biting my internal nails. 70 bucks. He just looked at it and he's like, 70? That seems fair to me. That seems totally fair. Deal. You got right it on, man. Thank you so much. So we did the deal, gave him the 70 dollars and I'm going home happy. Need to borrow yeah, some money? I always need to borrow money. So I, I take the hat, I actually find something else I want, which is a Donkey Kong N64 cart with remote. It's the little RC cars. I'm interested in this. You're gonna tell me what kind of value you have here, and then you tell me what makes it fair for you. And you know what, I brought trade, so I busted out all my trade. I had, I brought over my uh, top loader NES, Roar, it's Championship Pro-Am on the Genesis. And I had a Zen, but, I couldn't trade the Zen because Chris wanted the Zen. You okay? I'm okay. You need one of these things, don't bit. you? No, yeah. no, no, not just not straight across, but same. <laughs> you need this one, huh? <laughs> so Ricky's about to do this trade, and I see he puts out Zen, the intergalactic ninja, and my eyeballs, my heart starts racing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to get that. I want that game. You gotta tell me these things before you trade it. Please don't trade it. And I'm thinking, how do I cut in here? It looks like he's about to trade it, and I want I don't want to be a jerk and stop this deal. Technically, I brought it to Game On, and I even showed it to him on in ga at Game On, and he didn't say anything. But I was kind of a jerk. 
and kind of stop the deal. That, that that okay, okay. Do I want, I do want to get okay. okay, what do you? Uh, okay, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll leave this one aside. Just leave this one aside for now. But I think everyone was happy in the end, so maybe I'm not a jerk and I'm just, you know, I'm just facilitating stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. You, see, you see what he's doing to me? I still, I still love the guy. Like, and you know, whatever. Chris wants it. I'm gonna give him money for it or something. I might give him a pint of blood or maybe I'll buy him a churro. Oh my gosh, don't be racist. You know what? We just start working out a deal, but I still kind of wanted more. No, no, you tell me my friend. What else do you need? I know you're looking at it like, oh my yeah, god, I need something stuff, else. Man. I like that Mega Man right there, but I don't know. I had already been eyeballing this Mega Man X that I saw there for 60 bucks. It's actually a great deal. That's pretty cool. I do love X. That is really cool. Because those usually go for a lot more to me. When I, well, the ones I see go for more. So what do you think? Uh, I think... So we haggle and he comes up to me, he's like, alright, I tell you what. I'll give you this, yeah, for this, we will throw in 10 bucks. The, these things right here, the top loader and the, the games, except for Zen, plus 10 bucks for Mega Man X, the Donkey Kong, and the hat. Okay. And I think that's a deal. That's a deal. That's a deal. A deal? Thank you, Johnny. Man. You're welcome, brother. Woo! So it's more than fair, so I said yes. So, Ricky, would you do 10 on this? <laughs> No? You need the 10 bucks, do you? You need 10 bucks. <laughs> right now, I see you're in a situation. I I'll just go to the ATM, like five bucks out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. So, as we're about to walk out, I see this Mario figure. I was that, what was that? This is like a base or something. Oh, my. I love Mario figures. The older, the better. It was a Mario holding a hat like this. <laughs> I do want it, but I don't know I should. You should. And I had to ask how much. Tony's like, how about this? I'll make you a deal. But he's like, you know what? I'll make you a deal. You bring me a Isaac's burrito next time, and you got yourself a deal. Take it. Next time you come, you owe me Isaac's. You really, you can trade burritos for games and toys? I had no idea this was an option. Only Ricky would trade a video game for burritos. <laughs> <laughs> trade a toy? I've never heard of trading a toy for a burrito. Is this even real? I'm gonna go into the next place and try to trade a hot dog and see how that works out for me. It's not gonna work out. Dude, cool. <laughs> You're the best, Tony. Right, you're welcome. A figure for a burrito? That is an awesome deal. I've made a lot of jokes Debatably racist Mexican jokes. I'll bring your burrito oh, next time. <laughs> I'm so happy. What a wonderful place to shop, a good store, and a great owner, which makes everything even better. But now, I've been looking for this Mega Man for a while. I haven't been looking for this Donkey Kong, but I had to have it. <laughs> so we searched through this store, and now we're off to Bro's Game Shop. It's just pretty close, right around the corner, so we'll see what we find there. That is a sweet looking Look, bunny! <laughs> so we're off to the next place. Let's see if we can find more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's asking what, 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 what kind of burrito. Are you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Stay seated. After this break, all the boys get their retro on, and NES Complex breaks his own rules. B-roll of, of uh, you're driving and filming, and I'm I'm just standing here with free hands or sitting here. I should be holding the camera. Here we are, Bros. Dot Game Shop. We're here at Bros. Game Shop, hoping we find some more stuff. Still on the quest for some Super Nintendo. We're gonna get the deals. Until September 1st. We're finally here. I'm actually really excited to come in here and purchase something and look around because you know what? It looked awesome on the internet. So we go into Bro's Game Shop and I like this place. It feels like a mom and pop video game store. The guys chill. Oh my gosh, look at the inside of this. I know you're going to be able to see it. 
It's like nothing's ever been put in it. You know, I've been having a hankering for some Capcom games. That's sort of like a mini collection within a collection that I'm hoping to complete. So I'm looking for Capcom games. Sweet. No, thank you for showing me. Yeah. You guys have Sega Master System stuff, so that's good. And right away, in this shop, I didn't look for Sega Master System anywhere else, but here, I go straight to Sega Master System. Great baseball, great baseball, great volleyball. It ain't no Super Spike V-Ball, I'll tell you that much. And right away, under $10, which is perfect for me, I see a boxed shooting gallery game. I actually don't have shooting gallery. Can I see shooting gallery over here? The reason I want shooting gallery here is because my lack of knowledge of shooting gallery this guy right here. Boink. I've owned the game in the past, but I've never played it. So this is one of those games I get to get my hands on. Sadly, no booklet, but. That's all right, I'm not super worried about the booklet right now. And kind of feel it out, like, okay, is this gonna be a game I enjoy? It's gonna be a new experience for me on the Sega Master. I need it. Shall I buy it? I'll hold it, do you want me to hold it? How do you I do it. it here? Okay, he don't trust me yet. <laughs> I don't blame him. Guy don't comes know. in with camera and weird glasses on. Chris is talking to a pigeon. Are you talking to a pigeon? It didn't fly away. I was looking at shop. Honestly, that was like the weirdest thing. We looked over and Chris was talking to a pigeon, for real. He was literally talking to a pigeon by himself. People pass me in the street. They see me, but they try to ignore me. I think that's a great idea. Stop it. No, I'm looking, but I'm not finding. So we're getting ready to leave. Riff's over there buying his Sega Master System stuff. What's your finest pack in your opinion? Sour, red, like purple, or blue? I like the sour. I'll take a sour then. You know it's a weird day when the most hyper person you know wants some sugar. He needs more sugar and he buys some Skittles. I have a feeling we're all gonna be tasting the rainbow soon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I really wanna get something, so I double check the NES case, cause... What does that mean? We might get a game. Yeah. Ricky might buy a game. The yes! plot thickens. And I saw Carnov for five bucks. I can't find my Carnov anymore, so you know what? I, I, I don't know what happened to it, I can't find one. Right, tell so us. Can I get the Carnov right here for five dollars? Yes, Carnov. I'm gonna pick this up for five bucks for a Carnov? It's not bad. Carnov is an amazing game. Well, let's, let's just say it's like Bad Dudes. Is it like Bad Dudes? I can't remember now. Nope. <laughs> yeah, he forgot to mention the Russian theme and how playing as a man who just wears pants and no shirt is just something that Ricky really would enjoy. I forgot that part. Yes, I really would. <laughs> Mexican Latino flavor. Oh, dude, yeah. I just So I'm scoping, I'm running my finger down, looking in the looking in the case, and I see all kinds of Nintendo games, and there are the Capcom games. Commando. It's not <laughs> right? Bionic Commando, just Commando. They have Ghosts and Goblins, which has a mighty fine cover, I might add. It's a really good uh, box art. And then also, can I see this Willow right here? Second from the top. And then I find Commando, and I see Willow. I see some other games that I have, but those three I don't have, so I'm excited, and I'm like, can you get those out? I wanna buy those, and they're good. They're clean. Capcom, baby. All right, I think I'll do it. Sure enough, I bought them. But I like to get dust covers. I, when I think of Nintendo games, I think of pulling it slowly out that dust cover, and just like that magical moment, like when I was a kid. So I'm like, do you have any dust covers? And he's like, let me check. So he goes back and he finds some and he brings them over. And then I look at my wallet, I only have one dollar left. <sighs> Man, this game hunting thing is bleeding me dry, I tells you. And it's gonna be a dollar fifty. And so I did the unthinkable. I can't believe I did this. Can I borrow, Can I borrow some, some money? money? Riff, uh, you have any money? Can I, can I borrow some money? One dollar? This will buy you two. So is this to repay me for all the money you borrowed? Yeah, I probably owe you like 
I think you owe me 10. But, no, I don't know how much. Like I don't even know. I know what Riff's gonna say. I can already read his mind. He's gonna say, We've, we're even we're now. I gave you $1.50. We're even we're now. That is not how it works. We are not even now. No. But I think we both can agree that 150 will cover it. Skittles, taste the rainbow. I have officially paid him back by giving him $1.50. 50 cents of that was actually Ricky's money, but I'm gonna count it as mine. So this $1.50, we're marking it down in his pursuit as Chris is officially paid back. He agrees wholeheartedly. He's not a math whiz, you know. He's a lot of things. Math whiz is not one of them. We will not be even now until I collect every last red cent. Yes, it is. Oh, my rib, careful. Is it hurt when I didn't, lean? I didn't touch your rib. Stupid Ricky. You broke his rib, Ricky? Chris told me to do an episode where we talk good about Ricky. I'm having a hard time. Thanks, man. Later. So now we're on our way to go see Gerard. No. No? We're on our way to get some caffeine. Oh, this is true. We're, we're, dude, we're like lagging. I don't know what it is about we, today. We need some coffee. And before heading home today, we have one last stop. While we were in Game On Expo in Arizona, Gerard had too much stuff to carry. So he said, Riff, will you take my stuff home and bring it to my office sometime soon? So we're going to go there. And his complex has never been there. We're going to go visit Gerard, that one video gamer completionist guy. Did you push him this that time? I did like, not push his mother. Did you throw no. bubbles at him? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Stupid Ricky. I He's see your me. butt. It's beautiful. Coming up, the completionist gets his hands on all his goodies, and Ricky gets to see his long lost love that he sold to Gerard. Stay tuned. Riff's eating Skittles. Those are actually delicious. The green ones? And Dr. Pepper. Oh no. Well, it's, a, it's a deadly combination. You guys are screwed in about 20 minutes, I can tell you that. So we go to Gerard's office and I have to deliver him these games. The games I took home from him from Game On Expo. All right, I got his game. My thing's broken. Thanks, Ricky. You're welcome. I took good care of these games. I promise I did not mess with them at all anyway. We borrowed. Three of them, they're at our office. I signed seven of them in case your audience wants them signed. And uh, we made paper mache out of two of the boxes. If you made paper mache out of Super Turrican 2, I'm gonna murder you. It was Bucky O'Hare, only. It's okay, that was Ricky's copy. So we're gonna go in Gerard's office and hang out just for a little bit in his office. So these are the Gerard's on the phone. These are the games that we brought to him. All right, There's we'll pop the like chain then. Dragon, the chain. Dragon, Dragon Quest there. controller. Sonic Knuckles Chaotix. Turk into the Bucky O'Hare. Zelda Minish Camp. Torres looking at me weird right now. It's kind of scary. Uh, Metroid Fusion. Yeah. Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Mm -hmm. And so many more. So one of the trippiest things about going in Gerard's office was seeing the cases that I made. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> like, uh, that I, you, you know, I you, did this video on these game cases and I was cutting these things and then I gave them to Ricky and then Gerard came over and got some things from Ricky and here oh, it man. is. Somehow through the journey of time, they ended up in his office. I gave them to Ricky and Ricky gave them to him. It's just a trippy thing to see the Bucky O'Hare case that I cut right there. In Bam. the completionist's office, that's so trippy. <laughs> it's always fun to hang out with Gerard because when we go to his office, I get to see my old stuff that I used to have. I bought a lot from Ricky back in January. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. thing that I'm most proud about that I haven't really shown anyone is this bad boy. Let me try and get behind. I love the guy because he helped me out when I needed. There's times when you go through hard times and honestly, he helped me out a lot. He came to my house and offered to buy stuff from me because you know, he's a genuine guy. Oh. Final Fantasy 7, Japanese, PlayStation 3. Final Fantasy 7, Advent Children based, so it's based hey. off the film. So I haven't even opened it up, I've been afraid to open it up. So I love coming here and seeing my old stuff. That Final Fantasy box, that thing is beautiful and I'm glad it went to him. I, I only opened it up to make sure it was complete and I was like, <laughs> oh sweet! And I sealed it back up, I'm like, I'm not playing this thing. <laughs> has it been, I mean, has it been opened to your knowledge? Has it been used? I think it was used. 
This yeah. is a beautiful, wonderful box, kind of like the highlight. I feel like one of the highlights of his collection. The guy got it from me, he's like, oh, I, I, he was literally moving to Japan. He's like, I didn't even get to play it that much. He's like, but here you go. I was like, I'll take it. Yeah, man. Nice. And then I took it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad it went to him out of all people because to, when, if you know Gerard, it's like the kindest, nicest. It's like you just want to hug the guy. I, I don't know what it is. And then stroke his beard. You hear that internet? Take note. Take note from this guy, he's the mastermind. Never take notes from me. <laughs> <laughs> so the night with Gerard, we actually kind of put the camera away and just hung out and didn't film anything. And these are the moments in YouTube that are the best and most important. When you guys can kind of set aside what we're doing on YouTube, the glasses come off, the hats come off, the shoes come off. Everybody just hangs out and we talk about real things and what matters in life. So Gerard. You know, I've met a lot of people on this YouTube journey and he is one of the most genuine people that I've met. Always a, Always pleasure. a pleasure. Always, welcome, Always welcome, on welcome on the show. On the show. We freaking, we love, freaking you. love you. Overall, it was just such a great day to go game hunting and pick up a bunch of NES games I was looking for and hang out with Gerard. But of course, hanging out with Riff and Rick. All right, so that's the end of the day. This has been a Great day, we went to two game stores, we got to hang out with Gerard. So overall, a fun day. We didn't get anything too crazy today at all, but we did have a good time when you bring friends together and we can look at video games. A great time at two different stores. I got to hang out with my two pals right here, Riff and Chris. I mean, beautiful day. And then closing the night out by hanging out with Gerard and just relaxing and doing some of the things that matter most in YouTube. But today, I just had in my heart that I just wanted to say how much I love Rick. Rick, can I give you a hug? Sure. Like, <laughs> like an old game look for us? <laughs> Ricky just laughs a lot. I like it. It's loud out here. I think I inhaled some bus fumes. I was gonna talk about how much I love Ricky. I still love Ricky, but right now, a little, little unsure if my heart is beating with the same kind of affection that it was beating with this morning. So we go over and do oh. it. Man. Well, it's all about Ricky today. <laughs> he winced like I was gonna hit his wrist. I get scared. Probably not. Oh, what a deal. The more obnoxious, annoying, and like weird I can be, I'm all for it. Did you just throw my burrito, Mario? <laughs> oh no, I broke him. No, tell me what the things you say about Chris when he's not here. Oh, when he's not here? Oh, I stabbed him in the back. Just, no, no. just cal cal calm he's down. down. He was talking to a pigeon. Yeah, Don't run. Yeah,